Welcome everyone to the Masters Painting Challenge. I see some familiar faces and names. Is anyone a newbie? Terry and Jonelle and Bonnie. Awesome, welcome. I'm Julie DeBoer, uh, one of the founders of Masters, and Chantelle Barber is one of our mentors. And this is uh, one of our most, I would say, exciting events because of this. The this is going to be great to paint with Chantelle and to see your process and take on the challenge. And then the idea is next week we're going to get together again, same day, same time. You'll get a new link. And uh, when you have completed the painting, if you choose to do it, you can submit it to Masteries and we're going to share them all together with Chantelle again and look at everyone's work. <clears throat> and the beauty of it is seeing everyone's style and interpretation of the reference photo. Uh, it's, it's fantastic to see how unique everyone's work is and we love to celebrate that. We also do some prizes next week, Friday. So if you're a Masters member, there'll be, and it's just a random, we don't pick best paintings because we're not a, we're a non-competitive community very intentionally. And I don't know how anyone would pick one over another when we're all so unique and we all have our own way to express our art. Uh, so uh, we draw a winner for, if you're a Masters member, uh, the prize is a Masters painting apron. And if you're a non-member, you'll get a once one month membership to our recording library, which is pretty sweet, um, which has all of our event recordings, demos, critiques, panel discussions. There's over 100 videos in our library, all featuring our mentors. Anyway, welcome, Chantel, to the painting challenge. Um, how many of you know Chantel already? <laughs> awesome. OK. Chantel, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh. Um I love working in acrylic, very passionate about this medium, very passionate about painting figures and uh, people portraits, and uh, just excited to be here and, and do this paint along with everybody. Mm -hmm. It is a beautiful reference photo, and I love your interpretation of it. I'm just going to share my screen and share those really quick. For the sake of the recording, this is going to go up on YouTube. It should be up tomorrow. Um, and well, the thing about the reference photo is I love to be able to take my own photographs that I used to do paintings from, but I think that it's very important for an artist to have that artistic license and use your reference photo simply as a place to inspire your finished painting. So we're not copying it exactly we're looking for inspiration, and then the painting becomes its own unique, original piece of art. Yes, I love that. Um, and also the reference photo is uh, Chantel's kind of by copyright, you took the photo, so that's yours, and you're fine with everyone using it and interpreting it uh, in their own way. And then just give a credit to Chantel if you're posting it um, on social media or whatever, uh, list her as the um, as the owner, I guess, or the the photographer and an artist behind that. That sound good? Yes, perfect. Okay, and here is her painting again. So, uh, All right, sorry. So, uh, so I'm, are we ready? Do I just jump in? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. My, uh, my microphone uh, muted while I was sharing the screen. I keep forgetting it does that. Um, yes, awesome. Let's get started. And folks, if you want to paint along, you're welcome to. If you'd like to watch and paint later, that's totally up to you. Um, and we are free to throw questions at Chantelle as she paints and <laughs> make this hour as intense as possible. <laughs> so I always try to loosen up a little bit before I jump in here and do this. And um, I'm going to work as fast as I can. I'll tell you what, I normally don't uh, 
do something like this in an hour. So this is a challenge for me too. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, sure. But what I want to start off really with just a loose idea of where I want to, I call this my block in. And so really loose with a little bit of drawing. And then I'm going to pull out the form. And you'll see how this develops. Because what I find is working with acrylic, I like um, to be able to, I need to move things around and I need to do it fast. And I don't want too many solid lines, which is why I'm doing this very loose and, and very uh, light. And I also do have one open acrylic on my palette. And that what that simply means is that it's uh, not going to dry as fast as your heavy body acrylic. And I do that so that in this initial drawing stage, I can uh, have more freedom to move things around and not have it too fast until I get to where I want it to start to dry fast. I see that can actually benefit it. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, tell us about your which what color you're using and maybe your brush that you're using. It is a little brush that is really great to do detail work but still keep it loose. And it's a long liner by Silverbrush. It's called Silver Silk. And it's size number two. And I absolutely love this brush because, again, it allows me to do some drawing, but it's making me stay very loose, very expressive, and not getting tight. And I'm using uh, transparent red iron oxide along with uh, a little bit of transparent burnt umber. And that's just kind of giving me this warm feel as I start to fill the, the base and have this, uh, it's going to be a really nice And I, I like parent because I don't want very solid, heavy lines. Yet. I want to keep it loose and it's uh, I like to take a little bit of control for my overall form before I start building on this. And once again, not getting into too many small details before I'm actually ready to do that. Um, what uh, size is your canvas, Chantal? It's a 12 by 12. The original painting was done on a 10 by 10. Okay. And so I'm going to switch to a filbert now. I'm just going to take a little bit of the uh, pad orange with a gray that I love. It's called a neutral A gray. And just start to block in a little bit of uh, a uh, midtone value in the base. And I can move down here. And this is a filbert. It's also silver brush and it is a soft space. Nice. I love working with the filberts. They give me a lot of control, and I like that these are all bristle brushes because it also allows me to have control where I'm applying the paint. Uh, and I do not put my brushes in water. So as I'm starting to put the paint up here, it's I'm just doing this all with a dry brush. I'm not dipping it in water. Hmm. And now I'm just adding a darker tone for the hair, and it's just a uh, transparent burnt umber with a little bit of a lizard crimson and a tiny touch of it. And that is just dry brush and uh, heavy body paint, you said? Yes. Now I do have a Stay Wet palette, which for me is a game changer. And that is, you know, it's got the sponge to keep the acrylic paint from drying out, and it lets me mix my palette colors without, or, or actually what I want to say is it allows me to mix pools of paint so that I can control my values and they're going to stay moist and workable, just as if you were working in oil. Mm. I love that, that's a brilliant idea. 
And you can you don't even have to. I mean, the the master sync system is fabulous, but if you don't have the ability to get that, you can come up with your own palette. Uh, I found that if you go to a fabric store and you buy, I'm trying to think of what it's called. It's a uh, like a, a foam uh, sponge that would go into maybe quilting or batting, something like that. That would act as your sponge. It will hold quite a bit of uh, the water for you. And then you can put paper on top of it to pull that moisture up and that becomes your palette. The only thing to keep in mind if you're going to make your own is whatever paper you use actually hold that moisture up and not because uh, some palettes are coated, so they they won't pull that. And is the uh, is it a synthetic brush or hog hair? Still the hog hair uh, bristle brush. I'm still using the same brush after I went from the, the little tiny uh, silver silk brush. Okay. And now I'm going to add a little bit of light in so that I'll be able to balance between the two. I'm still going back to the cat orange with a little bit of white. It's remarkable how easy you're making this look. I love the looseness and quickness of your work. Well, it's taken a, a, it's a journey. It's become a journey, but I'll tell you, it's so much more fun than what painting used to be for. Like before, I decided that uh, this was much better for me. Now, this is just a little bit more of a golden color, and that's the uh, titanium white with the transparent red iron oxide. And another thing I love to do is not just think about painting the you know, face, hair, clothing, but look for all of the ways that I can uh, bring these colors together and let them work their way around the canvas so that color can, there, there are no boundaries is what I want to say. I don't feel like, oh, this is fair color, it just doesn't stay here. Or this is a flesh tone, it needs to stay here. I'm looking to bring these colors around and have, it's mainly the values that I'm thinking of. And also uh, the transparency, whether it needs to be opaque, more solid, or if I want to see how light and dark. Oh, and color temperature, whether it's going to be warm or cool. Your, um, your audio is a bit muffly. Is anyone else having a bit of a hard time? Okay, not just me. Um, Let me see if I can do this. Let me join audio. And is that any better? Uh, keep talking. It's like if this is better, I can switch it off of the computer. So uh, yeah, let's let's try this for a few minutes. And this is a good time for me to start to think about adding a little bit of background because I'm going to use that to cut into the painting. Mm -hmm. The other thing about working the colors all around the canvas is I get, when it comes to, well, what color will I put in the background, it's not such a difficult decision because I'm actually wanting to just simply pull colors from what I'm using in the figure. How's the audio do? Yeah, I think it's a little bit better. Now, uh, one reason why we um, are doing the, this portrait um, or figure painting challenge is that our uh, is focused more so on portraits and figure work. We're calling it 
captured moments and it is open to interpretation so that other artists can participate who don't do portraiture either but we wanted to kind of highlight uh this subject matter and and not only that but you have an upcoming course on uh starting out in acrylics for beginners which yes. is awesome we haven't had much for for beginners before and now we've launched five courses for beginners and you're you, you're tackling the acrylics uh which is fantastic really excited about that it is exciting and i think it's a, a great setup for a course we're going to have six sessions so plenty of time to really delve in what is possible to achieve with the acrylic medium and acrylic has so it's just so versatile a medium and really fantastic and so I want to be able to share that and kind of take away that intimidation factor because I know some people are intimidated by the fact that it does dry quicker and they feel like they're not able to, to blend yeah no I'm Another thing I like to use kind of to opinion is a mirror so that I can look back at the work myself and make sure that I'm not losing um, that my drawing is sound, and that also, you know, color placement is where I want it to be. And since I have to be right up on top of the the uh, canvas for the the demo, I'm also able to see what it would look like from further back in the distance. So I'm just adding a little bit of line. I'm just going to share your reference photo again. And there's a, a question I missed about retarder and then one about what is the pink paint mix? Um, so I do not use retarder. Is that, I'm guessing that that might be what the question is? Yeah. I, use, I don't use it and I don't like it, but I do like the open acrylics. And so if you feel like you need longer dry time, you know, I would definitely work with some open acrylics on your palette and you can easily match, not match, mix. You can easily mix the open acrylic with um, the heavy body acrylic. In fact, I've, I've done that quite a bit and they work really well together. And I'm sorry, what was the other question? Uh, what is the pink paint mix? So the uh, warmer, lighter tone. In the background, I think. Uh, in the background, that is that transparent red iron oxide, and I use it a lot. It is a really wonderful color for getting this warmer pink tone, and I can use it by itself, or I can mix it with a little bit of a list print, which I'm doing right now, and see that gives it even more of that glow tone. Because it's transparent, getting this wonderful of the, the, the transparency, obviously, the canvas peeking through, so it feels like it's glowing more than if I was putting on a heavy body acrylic that was just okay. And uh, and I think it, she actually meant the skin tone on the neck area, and I think the cheek probably that you put in there, yeah. Is, now this one was a, a combination of alizarin crimson, with a tiny touch of blue into it, but also with white. And then here is exactly what I did over here, which is the transparent red iron oxide and a lizard and things. Perfect. Uh, is there... I was just going to I'm not washing my brush out. I'm getting all these wonderful color nuances on it. I'm simply wiping it on a... a light cloth and I'm going from pile to pile of paint and it lets me create these very subtle color transitions. Uh, your audio is a little bit better. Is there a third option you can try? Or probably not, hey? <laughs> There's only two devices. Okay, I'll give her a minute here.
How's this? Okay, let's keep going. All right. Awesome. I think I missed a question. Yeah, there's a question about your palette. Is there any way we can see uh, your palette? I will. Yes. Let me see if I can do that. Very just a moment. Isn't that amazing? It's complete. Like uh, the figure is is so coming out so clearly. Remarkable. Oh, there we go. Lovely. So that's a stay wet palette. Umber, it's here for an umber. Transparent red iron oxide. This is ultramarine blue, halo blue. Elizabeth Crimson. Add orange. Uh, add yellow light. Add yellow meaty. White. The neutral eight gray I talked about. Uh, and these two are uh, quinacridone, azo gold, and this is a new color, transparent orange. Okay. I'm going, we're getting a bit of feedback, so I'm going to try um, which audio are you using from your smartphone or from your desktop? This is a smartphone. I can go back to the desktop if I need to. Okay, let me just mute that one. Okay, keep talking. Okay, now we can't hear her. Okay, you have to unmute your desktop. I can't unmute it for you. I muted it just to see if it would. There we go. Okay. So now I think it's on both. And I'm not sure if that's gonna give a, uh, uh, what do I wanna say, uh, echo. Yeah, it is still. the The last option was probably better. It sounds pretty cool. Okay, now. My goodness, there's always something, isn't there? Oh. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> I think it stopped. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more definition. I'm going to join and see if I can troubleshoot. Okay. Mike is going to join us and see if he can solve the echo problem here. Love troubleshooting, especially when I don't have to Um. So now I am going to check with the mirror again. See how it looks from a distance. And then I can continue to So in case you missed that, Chantel uses a mirror to look at the painting flipped. Uh, a great technique to um, very quickly you can see when that things are off balance or or are doing well um, by looking at it even upside down flip it mirror image um, great way or stepping way back is your cloth damp or dry Chantel that you're wiping with it's Uh, it's dry. And let me show you. And let me show. And let me show. It's just a white it's just towel. A white towel. White towel. 
Maybe the yeah, audio needs to be turned off completely on your computer. Um, the echo is fantastic. All right, I think that might be a bit better. Keep chatting. Uh, so it's just a white cotton paper towel, or not paper towel, I'm sorry, towel, that I use to control how much acrylic paint I'm actually putting up on the painting surface. All right, Mike has come in and he thinks the issue is a Zoom issue and suggests that if you leave and come back with the device that you're using audio on, that it should straighten out if you're up to that. Zoom sometimes is glitchy. And while you're gone, I'll, I'll prattle on. Um, <laughs> can you talk right now? Um, yeah, there's no echo currently. Okay. Am I on the kit? Can you still hear me? Yeah. All right. Let me figure this out. I need to go back in here. Um, there we go. So am I back on all right? Yeah, so far. So good. Let's see if I can find your device here. There it is. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm even seeing angel wings uh, behind the child. Well, it's funny. Uh, oh, I grabbed Anyhow, when I work this way, things really do start to just kind of take shape. Mm. How long have you been painting, Chantel? I have been painting since I was 11 years old. Oh, wow. A so really long time. I did start off with a, uh, oil and quickly found out that, I mean, it was, it was great, but it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. And I was introduced to acrylic when I uh, was taking a uh, course at a, community college and I and that just resonated with me so much and I've not worked in oil since I'm still using the uh, number four filbert and putting the paint on with it, try, looking for ways to continue to build the form. And then if I don't like something I put on, I lift it off or I can even soften it with the paper towel. Comment from Lynn, you really have a great knowledge of child anatomy and features. Do you paint children often? I do. I, and that's uh, kind of interesting because if you would have said to me before, you know, are, are, what's your niche or what do you feel like you specialize in? I'm not sure I would have, really would have thought about it being uh, children. 
But as I look at my work through the years, I definitely can see that, that that's what I focus on. And it is something that I do love doing. When I do the lines, I'm simply putting them in. And then again, if it doesn't look like it's where it needs to be, one thing I do love about acrylic is because it's dry, I can lift that up and it's not hurting the integrity of what's already there. Now you also have a mentorship group for aspiring artists. How is that going? That is been going since what September, I believe, of last year, and really enjoying getting to work with such a great group of artists. And we are focusing. We've been doing some uh, figures and some portraits. And also, of course, exploring just the, the wide variety of techniques and different marks, mark making with uh, using the acrylic medium and how versatile it is for so many of the different styles of all the artists who are in the group. And it's just been a pleasure to be able to be a part of that. So the thing that's tricky working with something like this is getting that profile and keeping it so that it's soft and childlike. And that's why I kind of keep going back in and out on this to get it to feel the way I want it to be. And have just enough information so that it works. And let's see, I'm going to go back and bring a little bit more of the brown, transparent burnt umber in. Just wipe some of that off and then work my way back into this part of the head. And at this point, I'm going to bring in more of the background and go for a larger brush. So I'm grabbing a larger filbert. And I think this is size eight. I'm just using white with a little bit of a feeling of green. And that is what I've mixed with ultramarine blue and the cad yellow light. And backgrounds, especially when you're dealing with a figure, it's such a wonderful way to cut in and actually redraw. And then I can work the background at the same time that I'm working the edges of the figure. And then they start to almost become one. The other thing I've noticed with acrylic is you have to really approach it with, you, can, you cannot be intimidated. You can't let the canvas intimidate you. You have to put it on there and be willing to make bold uh, brush strokes. Um, and then that's another way that you can move the medium, the paint around your canvas quickly so that it, you, you are able to create more of this, uh, painterly feel to it. I'm 
And I think, did I miss a question that maybe popped up, Julie? Yeah, sorry, I've been trying to unmute myself. Um, the comment from Lynn, this is wonderful, even if Chantel was to stop now, I totally agree. Looks gorgeous. Uh, and Debbie's asking, do you let parts of the canvas show in the end? I do. I like to have this feeling of uh, transparency along with um, more opaque passages of paint. And so what I try to do, and I always like to work on a white canvas. And that allows me to then build things as the, the painting develops so that what I'm doing is not just coming with my idea of what I want it to look like, but also watching what's happening here on the canvas and then making decisions based on that. And I find that if I work with a white background, I can do that a lot easier than if I'm toning it. Plus, I find that if you tone the background, in my opinion, with acrylic, it tends to make um, the colors look a bit more drab. And I think that's just kind of personal preference too. I found uh, that, yeah, the, the way an artist starts on their canvas is a very unique uh, uh, preference, really. So one thing that I started doing, and I'm going to add a little bit of this now because it will give me some of the light that I want, is taking this uh, abstract 3D liner from Sennelier, and it's acrylic paint. And it's really cool because you can come in and you can do things that give it, not only you're adding your drawing, but also more of this unique mark making and movement. And these can be, you can, uh, you don't have to leave this bright of white, you can come in and we can tone that down if it's too light but it just gives another sense of uh, great movement in the painting along with it being a more texture because it's uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, it's three dimensional. So it's giving you that solid look. So if you wanted to come back and you thought maybe a line was too sharp, all you have to do is uh, blend it out. It gives you a little bit more drying time. I mean, open time before it dries. But I'm always looking for ways to create unique marks on the surface. So it's about the painting, but it's also about this sense of um, movement and you know giving interest to the viewer to keep them focused on the piece and not just look at it and feel like it's all been done the same. And so I'm still using a brush that has not been put in water. And that once again is letting me kind of go from pile to pile here and create really subtle nuances of uh, value shifts, temperature shifts. Chantel, can you tell us again which uh, colors you're using that are open acrylic? The only open acrylic that's on the palette right now is the transparent iron red oxide. All of the others are the uh, heavy body acrylic. And I like to use a variety of either uh, golden or Liquitex. Golden or Liquitex. Yeah, that was my next question. Perfect. And uh, again, that depends on 
sometimes I find that the colors are slightly different between brands. And so I can find, for example, uh, the golden alizarin crimson is slightly different than uh, liquid Texas alizarin crimson. And so it just gives you a whole different feel. What was the name of the white pen again? The white pen is uh, Sennelier, and it's called an abstract 3D liner. And I believe they have quite a nice color selection. Um, so I just went with the white because I wanted to test it and see what kind of effects I could get with it. The other thing I like to do is take a palette knife like this, and even though the paint is dry, I can still scrape out different areas, especially right after I have applied the paint and get it, once again, this really nice sense of uh, movement and unique mark making in the piece. I'm gonna grab, go back to the smaller filter and deepen my darks in the clothing. So I'm going to use a lizard crimson with a little bit of the transparent burnt umber. On the brush and just kind of scumble it over what I've already got going on here. And see, this is where I can actually come in, like I was saying before. And if I want to break that up or get a sense of movement in it, I simply use uh, a palette knife along with paper towel to get those different effects. I'm very aware of how thick and thin my paint is that I'm applying. Because sometimes all you need is just the littlest touch of paint to achieve the effect that you're wanting to achieve. And other times you want heavier paint. I find what I like to do is start out with the thinner passages of paint, and then work my way into heavier. You have about 15 minutes left, Chantel. I just made a, a warmer mixture for the arm, and that's just the uh, orange with a little bit of burnt umber and alizarin crimson. Going to come back in and do a little bit more of that in the face, same color. What I find is if I was painting this in my studio, I would paint for maybe let's say 15, 20 minutes and then I would get back and I would look at it and decide what I felt was really working and then which passages were not working and you know, make some decisions before I came back and kept painting. Because what I find is we can overpaint something really quickly and lose great effects simply because we're so focused on the painting process that we're not really watching what's happening on our canvases. And so it's always good to just have that little bit of time where you're really looking at what's actually going on on your painting surface 
and then making a decision based upon that. Um, I'm going to grab a new little tool and I'll show you. This is just a um, color shaper. And what I can do, it's by Royal and Land Nickel. And it's going to allow me to put you know, a spot of color somewhere where just to, it, it's like a soft palette knife almost. And I love these because it gives me even more control when I want to apply paint in certain areas. But it also lets me once again, keep some of my paint passages uh, transparent because when you put the paint down, you can lift it back up and create just this wonderful, sense of transparent next to opaque. And one of the reasons why that's so important, I find, in working with acrylic, having, thinking about your transparency of your paint is we're giving the illusion of soft edges. And I don't mean illusion because they really are soft edges, but we're looking for ways to do it without the paint being wet. And one of the things you think of when you're thinking of uh, working in acrylic is, okay, well, the paint dries really fast and how can I blend things out? So what I'm thinking about is how can I work with this and create these wonderful nuances of soft edges with paint that's dry? And one of the ways I'm able to do that is with the different mark making that I, I can do. And you don't always have to buy necessarily art supplies. Sometimes it's simply, you know, looking if you've got a, a credit card or something else that's plastic, just look for ways to apply your paint that's not always the same. So don't necessarily do an entire painting with just a brush. And it's fun to add some of these different tools and see what kind of effects can be achieved with them. In your course, Chantel, are you gonna be tackling uh, that sort of thing? Um, not just the acrylic medium, but the tools as well? Tools, yes. We're also gonna talk about edges. And that's so important. And really that is important no matter what medium you're going to use edges and how you deal with edges. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about mixing color because being able to mix the correct colors is another way that you can control how it's going to look up on the uh, your surface. And now this is the only brush that I do dip in water during the painting process and it's because it's so fine and it's that little liner. And so I don't want, I actually need this one to be, um, to wash it out so it doesn't get hard or I don't bend it. And it is meant to work more with um, liquid paint, uh, which would be actually something like um, the acrylic inks, which I use a lot of times when I'm painting not doing it today because there's just not enough time to do it all. But acrylic ink is just another really great thing that you can use with your uh, acrylic heavy body paints to create, once again, really unique marks. And also um, they add different bit of chroma Intense, sometimes it's more of an intense chroma. And it doesn't need to have water because it's very, um, they're very uh, fluid. For those who are new uh, to the Master's Painting Challenge, um, if you do the painting, and, and we want you to encourage you to take uh, the reference photo and run with it, uh, take as much artistic 
license as you like. We love to see how you interpret uh, the photo. Uh, even if you don't want to use uh, Chantel's photo, you have a photo of uh, someone in your life you'd like to paint, then do that. Um, what we'd love to do is showcase them next week, uh, same day, same time. You'll get a new link uh, two hours before the event. If you'd like to include your painting in the showcase, which is uh, a fantastic idea, uh, you can send it to Masterius uh, on Instagram by uh, DMing it, so sending it directly to masterius.official, or you can post it on your uh, social media account and hashtag Masterius Painting Challenge. I'll put that in the chat. Uh, or you can email it to, um, I think it's ginger at masterius.com, and I'll put those in the chat. And then if you can get those to us an hour before the event, then uh, we're going to put them in a presentation and I'm going to share that. And Chantel will join us again and we'll look at each one and celebrate and talk about uh, the differences and the beauty of each of your unique voices in the way that you paint. Even if you're a beginner or you're advanced, uh, we'd love to see everyone's uh, work in the end. So I'll put that in the chat. I love um, seeing the different interpretations that artists have. And I think that is what makes us all so unique is we bring our own experiences to what we're painting. We bring our own voice. And all of this makes your finished piece of art really powerful. That's one of the beauties of mentorship, which is what we do at Masterius, is um, like with Chantel, she's a mentor. And so she's helping the artists in her group reach their own goals using their own style, their own medium. So it's very much curated for each artist. And so this event is one way that we like to highlight and celebrate those differences that we, we all have the gift that's put in us quite uniquely. And the joy of the journey is, is nurturing and honing that skill and bringing it out uh, with your unique voice. It's such a lovely uh, showcase. So how are we on time, Julie? Are we, I think we're getting really close. Oh, I should mention acrylic does dry. If you're using um, the heavy body, it does dry one value darker, which is why when I put colors up, I'm also looking at, you know, how they're drying, if they're still, because they're gonna go value darker. However, depending on whether or not you want to work with the open acrylic, those stay the same value after they're they're done drawing and um so that's a you know might be a plus for you depending on where you are in your art journey that's right and some some acrylics have less of a color shift i've found too a uh, windsor and newton has a professional uh, grade that has very little color shift if you like using heavy bodied acrylic. Yeah, and that's definitely something to uh, take into consideration. So this painting pretty much has been done, the whole painting with the silver brushes, the little silver silk liner brush. And then I threw in the um, shaper, this color shaper, which is by uh, Royal Sovereign. And this is the taper point number six. And I think, oh, and the palette knife. This is a uh, Lang Nickel, and it's, I think, a P16, uh, just a small little palette knife. And, and those are pretty much all the tools that, that I used on this one. It's brilliant. 
just brilliant. What do you think, folks? Feel free to unmute if you want to say anything or pop it in the chat. Stunning, love Chantel's work and approach to painting. This is great, it's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful work. Yes. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, Chantel. I love how there's a hint of an eye without putting an eye in there. How did yes. you do that? <laughs> yes. Well, and see, that's often where it, it comes down to us thinking about how much information is really necessary. Yeah. What, what do we really need in order to see it for what it is? Um, and, and that's, um, we, we give too much information more, yes. more times than not. Yeah, very evocative. The quite a quite a mood and, and movement, and it's it's wonderful. Thank you. Oh, and one other thing I'll quickly mention is if something dries and then you feel like the edges are too uh, sharp, you just take your paper towel with a tiny bit of moisture on it, and you can barely tap at it and uh, change any of the edges in your painting with acrylic. As long as it hasn't you know, dried for uh, several hours, you can move things around like that. Lovely, Chantel, will you be able to send us a photo of that for the showcase as well? Do that, yes. Awesome. And it's been fantastic to be able to be a, a part of this and uh, love uh, you know, being part of the, the Masteries community and taking this art journey, all of us together because we're able to learn from each other and there's so much joy in that, in the painting process, but also in the companionship that we mm. have. I love that, well said. And Tina brings up a great point. My imposter syndrome has gone through the roof and you are not alone. We all have imposter syndrome, which we've learned at Masterius and we're all killing it together. <laughs> well, you know what? Even your favorite artists have a imposter syndrome. So don't feel like it's just for a beginner or, you know, uh, if you're advanced, wherever you are, we all struggle with that. Yes. And, uh, and we all have that unique voice and unique style and, and we're all embracing that together. And it's, it's something at Masters because it's we're not competitive community, very supportive and the mentorship is just key that uh, we can do that in kind of a safe and trusted small group environment, uh, which really fosters that we don't need to paint like someone else. We really have it in us just the way it's intended to be. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Thanks Chantel, that was glorious to watch. Uh, what a joy to see you create. Loved being here. Awesome. All right. The recording will be up on YouTube uh, probably tomorrow. And then I put in the chat hashtag Masters Painting Challenge if you share it on Instagram or Facebook or just message it to Masters. Uh, you can DM direct message or you can email it to ginger at masters.com. Uh, do that before 11 a.m. Mountain Time next week, Friday. So one hour before we come back together for the showcase. And we'll put that together in a beautiful presentation. And Chantel and I will go over them. And please join us because it's really the highlight is seeing everyone's unique voice come through in the end. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See you next week. Thanks for coming.